and welcome to Help I Sex With My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, what should you do if there's a saucy sex scene on the telly when you're sitting with your parents? Oh. Have you ever been in that situation? No. I used to love football, that's why I was when I was younger. Oh. Was about 11. And, and the show. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was about 11, 12, and that was it. Same with Game of Thrones as well. I used to watch that with my mum. And where should I hold up in a zombie apocalypse? Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Try again, love. And where should I hold up in a zombie apocalypse? And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not your usual agony aunt. Oh, we're William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not. But also, can I talk about... I've just noticed that you do this every week. When you finish reading, we're not using... You do your paper flick and your pen thing. You like. You get so pleased with yourself. I'm in character. Well, is that right, sir? No, but we're not. Really sorry yet. for showing a bit of enthusiasm. Okay, sorry. For our podcast. Sorry. No, we're not Jordan North, radio presenter, TV presenter, showgirl. I'm... I'm more Audi A7, you're more Aldi Isle 7. And that's from Jacob. Can't uh, pronounce your last name. Elmori? Elmori. Elomori? Elomri. That's Jacob Elomori. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, actually. I like that. Audi A7, oh, I Aldi want some Isle of those Aldi sliders. Have you seen them? No. They say Aldi Das. <laughs> Have you not seen them? I don't know if it's a joke or if they're real, but yeah. Probably not. I don't know. Let's have a drink. Um, two parts to Bonnet, one part gin. So at the uh, time of recording, it's only quarter past eleven. It's fine. It's work. And you're flying today, aren't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry to everyone on the plane. Let's toast Erica. Now, in our weekend oh. release, Erica wrote in to say that she was laughing so much at Mikey being Anne Boleyn in a previous life, she dropped a weight on her Don't laugh. She dropped a weight on her foot, and now she's having to do her wedding day on crutches. In the gym, because we made a laugh. Ben, remind us we need to send that bottle and everything before we go. So, to Erica, who's a big Jean Deven, who's also on crutches. Cause, oh, don't laugh, it's not funny. I text Mikey to let him know, uh, and he said, Anne is mortified. <laughs> Erica. Erica. I hope you have a lovely wedding. You'll look beautiful hopping down the aisle. <laughs> Eric. You get hopped down the aisle. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it's I'm not sorry. funny. Sorry, Erica. We love you. Or you could install, like they have at airports, you could install a travelator down the aisle. Oh. So she could just sort of get on the travelator and that could convey her. Get a bloody stair lift as well while you're at it. Well, no, there's no stairs to go up in a church, really. Just It'll project her forward. If she gets a long dress, she could hide the cast underneath. Yes, it. she could be on wheels. <laughs> Funny, poor Erica. Sorry. No, it's only a top half in pictures, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's like one of those moon boots on, whatever they call them. Those big, yeah. yeah, vajazzle your crutches. Yeah, you could wedding up your crutches. Yes. You could get all... everyone Trail some <gasps> chiffon down them. You could get all the guests at the wedding to sign your part. Like sign your school. cast. It cast. It was a part at school. It was it, okay. Yeah, you could get them all to sign it. Draw willies on your leg and stuff. <laughs> yes, nothing says nuptials more than that. Oh, did you remember when... I brought my wrist twice. Remember when they cut it off and it's all hairy and there's like big skin balls. That's big balls of skin. It stinks. I, no, I'd never done that as a child. Mm. I throw darts with my right hand now because I broke the hand. <laughs> on the left. No, I throw darts with my right hand now because I... Broke my left wrist and I used to play darts. Right. With my mate and I had to learn to throw in my right and I've stuck with it even though I'm left handed. Is one wrist stronger than the other? Oh, aye. Anyway, in unrelated news, producer Ben drove in to, uh, or rode into the studio today without his helmet on his bike. Ben! Which is fitting. Which is fitting. Why? Mm, you know, say no more. Ben, don't do that, especially around London. It's really dangerous. Very dangerous. No, I know. Really dangerous. You could have Always a... wear your helmet on Always your, your on helmet. your head. Why did you not wear your helmet? What what you're laughing at? What what am I missing? It did he not wear his helmet? No, he came in sans helmet. 
Oh, it's there. So you did wear your helmet. Right, what's going on? He's got one helmet, at least. Right, what is going on? Has he been... There's this website. <laughs> There's this website, which Ben has sent me, called Team Helmet. And it's where weirdos on the internet have compiled a database as to which male celebrities and people in the public eye are circumcised or uncircumcised. And he is listed on it as circumcised. Shut the fuck up. Are and you this joking? is based on... How has he found it? What? How is he even eligible for this website? Are you, are you circumcised? Who knows? But he he why, why these people think they are is because we years ago made a marmalade joke about thick-cut marmalade as opposed to shredless. Yeah. And you went, that's how they describe Ben, or, oh, it's missing a letter, meaning thick, C-U-N-T. Yeah, yeah. And obviously someone has misheard that and thought you were describing, for some bizarre reason, Ben's appendage as thick and cut. That is so weird. And so thus he has appeared on this website. <laughs> As for the biggest weird thing is that they count him as someone in the public eye. Forget forget the other bit. My public eye. Hey! <laughs> well, it's quite public without a helmet. And there's a whole discussion underneath. There's so many comments. Let's have a look. Pass it here. Sorry, Judy Davis. We will go back to the episode soon. This is amazing. Oh, well. Having been... So what's it called? Who sent her? Let's say... My mate. This... Oh, wow. That's... What's it called? Two? Read that one. Having listened to all the episodes before March 2021, when this post was published, I don't think this information comes from the Sex and My Boss podcast. There's been three episodes where circumcision is it, has been discussed. None of them reference Ben or his status. Why would we? <laughs> For those interested, in the three episodes, How Do I Keep It Casual? 8th of October 2019, we're getting married at the 15th of October 2019, and surrounded by naked posh boys, 15th, 19th. What the heck? It's so nice that life is such a broad church. Oh, my God. Right. Now, I think... Are you keeping it... I think you've told me before you've, you've circum... Have I met that up? <laughs> and do you know, fair enough if you don't want to talk about that. It's quite... Yeah. My friend told me for years in year nine that he, he was circumcised. Is this Rick? No, it wasn't Rick. No. Pilks. No, I'm not, it wasn't Pilks. He told me that he's um, circumcised and that he's still got his foreskin in a little jar. That I, I've heard of that before. Yeah, but then about not that long ago, I said to him, have you still got your foreskin in that little jar in your mum's house? And he literally spat his pint across the room and he's like, I'm winding you up, I never really had it. <laughs> so for about 12 years... No, but you joke, but Jonathan has a friend and uh, she keeps her son's foreskin in a little jar in the kitchen near the past. She's not even joking. What would it look like? Just a little a bit, bit of... Bit, like, bit, a, like, like, like a very short bit of rigatoni, probably. Like a hula hoop. Like, yeah, like a hula hoop. Like, like a, hula a floppy hoop. hula hoop. That'd be crispy. Oh. Anyway. Mm. Ready salted. <laughs> Is it true... So circumcised people, it feels better when the other one. I've heard things both ways. It's not as good. And it is as good. Okay. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sex to my boss. God, have we done all that just before that? Bit? Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram <laughs> at sex to my boss. Or you can write to William. He promised a handwritten plan. His own letter paper addresses on the website, sex my boss.com. How's your week been? It's been amazing. Yeah? I've got a new toy. Oh, I. Not like that. Oh, I. Christ, where's this episode This one for going? the kitchen. Yeah? <gasps> and I'm so sorry, because this is playing into your Tenerife Eleven Arif. William, have you? <laughs> I'm going to reenact the start where... The time, I'm going to reenact the scene where you told me that you got engaged to Mikey. We are now in a thruple with an air fryer. William! <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yes. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, I've had it for weeks. I've just told everyone. Jordan doesn't know yet. Don't tell him. <laughs> have, you, have you told your brother? Yes. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> no, they're fantastic. They're, they're honestly, products. it's changed my life. All I do now in the week, I put it away at the weekend. Oh, do you not have it out on the side? So, sorry, this is about you and I'm just talking. Across. No, no, that's fine. I have I'm it out used on the side, it. but I like it away at the weekend. Okay. I, so, so in the week, it's just great for midweek teas and stuff. Isn't yes. It? What have dinners. you made in it? What have you made in it? Uh, done a gammon. Okay. Yes. Ooh, be a bit tough, wouldn't it? I've got an air fryer cooked no. up as well, by the way. Okay, I might borrow that. Um, sausages. We had sausages great. last sausages night. Are great, yes. Delicious. Salmon, chicken's great. Well, I don't do salmon. <gasps> do you know what I love doing? Mm. Like chop up an aubergine. Or what the other one's called, courgettes. Yeah. Right? I promise you this, if you're listening, Gene Davis, really healthy for you. Sprinkle some salt and pepper on, a bit of olive oil, put in the air fryer. Delicious. Right. Yes. On what temperature? 180. Do you have a one or two draw one? I have one. What about you? <laughs> you have two. <gasps> William! <laughs> Do you have a two uh? I've got a two draw I one. thought I'd start off with one, I think, and we'll see. How... Oh, that... oh mm. that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had it. Hear me out. Yes. Now, I bought the little uh, trays that go inside it, the silicon yes, ones. Yes, mine are on order. No, I was going to cancel oh. them. I don't think, because the point of it is, those trays, I've got the silicone ones. The so crisper trays at the bottom. Yeah, so mm. I don't think it cooks it as good in those trays. Also, we call it an air fryer. I actually use the roasting setting more than the actual frying setting. Do you? Yeah, this is fascinating. Yes. I'm so happy for I'm you. in the mood for a roast tonight. What else have you cooked? What are you cooking? Uh, chicken, done chicken. Yeah. I uh, did a bit of black pudding. Oh, lovely. Very nice for breakfast. Yeah, we've done courgettes and potato, sweet potato. Do salt and pepper chicken in it. It tastes exactly like KFC. Hang on, salt and pepper chicken? Yeah, it's a, Is that, it's just a bit of recipe. chicken and you just put salt and no, pepper on it? No, 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 you it. put loads of salt and pepper on it, but you've got to proper season it, get it in, and then put it in your air fryer with... Tad bit of oil and it's it's like KFC. Chicken. That is chicken with salt and pepper. No, on it. but trust me, it's it's you, trust me. Okay. I know it sounds very simple, but do it. What brand have you got? Ninja. Yeah, I've right. got that one too. <laughs> I've got a ninja as well. Okay. I've got two drawers on there. All right. Sorry. Oh, that's the up me on the air fryers, don't you? I've got mm. two drawers. Yeah, you should see what see I get. See what I mean, Gene Divas. If I get a shed, he gets a shed. If I get a new car, he gets a have new car. Have you got car. anything new this week? No, but I get an air fryer. You have to get a bloody two-doorer. If I go to Tenerife, you go to Eleven Reef. Mm. Well, but I am happy for you. You should come over and see what I've got in my drawers. Why don't I come over? Because you want me to come and watch... The QE2 episode. The QE2 episode yeah. of Help Out. Can we get through the coronation and then you can come over? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm number love an air fryer picky tea. <gasps> an air fryer candlelight supper? No, an when air you... fryer picky tea. An air fryer candlelight supper? An air fryer picky tea. <laughs> Honestly, when I come in from, um, when I used to get in late from Saturdays, Saturday night takeaway, yeah, I'd have over. an air fryer picky tea, I'd just go in the freezer, chuck a load of beige in, just have a little picky tea. Right. Yeah, come on over. Could do both. We could do both, yes. Right. Uh, how's your week been? Yeah, it's 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 been good. I'm uh, really into race across the world at the moment. Oh. Now I'm not being funny, and tell me if I'm being a dickhead here. But I'm pretty sure I got used to into race across. I was the one that was I was the one that was harping on about it in first pandemic. Now, for those that don't know what this is, it's um, a TV show <laughs> where people people race across the, the world. world they go they go traveling they go backpacking they're given a small budget and they've got to get from one end of a country to another it's a televised gap year that's basically it's, the concept it's, it's, it's for this season three and they're doing it in canada so i'm really into that they doing it in canada can we also say well we're gonna say it anyway and lots of people including our friends particularly our friend chelsea was absolutely livid that we I, said no when i tell so many people this they are they are fuming one friend and i quote this will make you both <laughs> Uh, go on. Jordan and I were asked to do Race Across the World last year. Yeah. And sadly, we couldn't make it work. We just couldn't make it work. We, like, I think it was quite a Oh, lot. like give up six weeks and basically... I think it was more than that. I don't, because it, no, it, no. it was lovely to be asked. And yeah. I genuinely wanted to do it, but we just didn't have time, did we? No, we, we didn't have the time. We uh, the it, podcast as well. I also, I'd never seen the show at the point of saying no. Mikey has started to watch it. He's gone back to series one. Um... You love it, don't you, Ben? I'm sort of way. watching it sort of over his shoulder. You know, I'll be doing, I'll be probably doing something in the air fryer and he's sort of watching it. It's giving me anxiety just watching it. I 
there are, the bit that I got anxiety about the most was when they're leaving Greenwich at the start of the episode. They haven't even left the That's country. That's the first episode. And I'm, I'm already there like, no, I would have told everyone to F off. No, you're on the back of a bus, like no. for a 14-hour bus. I, I, there would be no comedy because I would be absolutely livid. But that said, we do, we navigate TFL most weeks. That's basically Race yeah, Across true. the World. So sorry we couldn't do Race Across the World, but the producers from Gogglebox, we are available. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I do keep watching it thinking, no, I just... There's a bit where they're going across an ocean in, from Uzbekistan, I think, or to Uzbekistan in Series 1. They're on a boat that's bobbing up and... Oh, oh, I just... Could be your... If you've never watched it as well, you're not allowed to fly. No. You've got to like, hitchhike your way across. But <sighs> in Canada, hitchhiking's illegal. Oh, is it? Have you not watched the third? I'm no. No, we're only on so series I'm one. I'm really into that. Succession. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm a few episodes behind. Oh, yeah. I haven't watched this week's. Don't say anything. Spoiler. Yeah, I'm going to watch it tonight in Glasgow. Scott Bryan said, mm. I think it was Scott Bryan, the TV critic. Yeah. I always see, always see him in Lyft at work. <laughs> Said um, that it's the best hour of television HBO have produced ever. Oh, really? Okay. So that's how my week's been. I've got my uh, I've got my nephews coming. Oh, Austin tomorrow. and Seb. Yeah, at the time of recording. With Lovely. Ryan and Kate. Nice. That'd be fun. Kate, is that Kate your sister-in-law or your mother's dog? No, Katie's the dog. Oh, Katie's the dog. Okay, fine. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, so they're coming. See new house as well, which will be fun. Oh, nice! Yes. Yeah. Give them the grand tour. Yeah. Last time they spilled cereal all on my new settee. Oh. So yeah, they're coming. Now We're you know to... how. I... Can you remember years ago when I moved into the flat and when I first moved down to London, not where I am now, and you came round? I had a new sofa and I put a tea towel down. Oh yeah, you did make me sit yeah. on tea towel. You did. Yeah. You I did found that video s- the other day. Oh, did yeah. you? Yeah. Now um, you know how I feel. We're going to watch some. Uh, got, there's some big telescope in Greenwich, speaking of which. The Greenwich Observatory? Yeah, we're going yes. there. Okay. Which That's a f- long way away. I know it is. That's what I said to him. It's about an hour it's basically, and a half. You're not doing Race Across the World without me, are no, you? No, I'm not. Trust me, I'm not. But yeah. Shall we talk about um, Mikey and the mouse? Yes. So we were preparing for the arrival of the air fryer. We had a delivery imminent. This is the funniest video I think I've ever seen in my life. Better if you seen it. <laughs> And I, Mike is, Mike has gone out to the gym. Can you send it me so I can? Yeah. And uh, Mike has gone out to the gym. I'm sitting at home. I had spent the entire morning on the terrace, sweeping and tidying and just getting it ready for spring. That sort what of thing. What day was this? It was over a weekend on oh. a Saturday. And... I was going to say, I'd love to have time to tidy my terrace. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I'm, I'm sitting there having lunch at the dining table. I look out the doors to the terrace and on the floor, moving around relatively slowly, is a mouse. So obviously, my uh, my hypnotherapy kicked into overdrive, and I ran out the room screaming. <laughs> and worth every I'd penny. I'd do the same if I was in a state. To yeah, be fair, I would. Anyway, so I thought, okay, well, Mikey will be back in half an hour. I'm just going to sit in. I'll sit in another room. <clears throat> it's fine. I'll just leave my lunch going cold on the dining room table. Fine. Off we go. And anyway, he came back, and Mikey went out to look for it. And couldn't see it. And then he worked out that it was sort of in between the table legs and the chair. But it was, it obviously eaten some rat poison because there's rat poison out elsewhere and it was dying. So it literally, at this point, half an hour later, couldn't move. And that's why it was slow on the terrace. And it was, I'm sorry to any animal lovers, but it it was twitching. But it was still alive, moving very slowly. But it was, its life was coming to an end. Anyway, so. My friend Jonathan was coming over that evening and I texted him saying, by the way, you might be helping us get rid of a dead mouse on the terrace or putting a mouse out of its misery. Anyway, luckily Jonathan didn't have to do anything because I was not very relaxed for a few hours in my house because there was this thing on the terrace and Mikey eventually sort of huffed and went, right, I'll go and deal with it and put it out of its misery. So he goes out with a bin bag and the dustpan and brush and his idea was flick it into the bin bag Go and take it out to the bins. Deal with it. So I, for whatever reason, decided to film this. You can't really see the mouse in this video. I'm filming it from the inside. And he does. He flicks it into the bin bag. And then for whatever... I don't know what came over Mikey. He's so mild. 
he gets the dustpan and whacks the, f- the show thing. Show me a video. Show me the video. And I screamed. I had to stop recording. Um, it's. But God bless him. I mean, he was, it to me he was very please. butch. So I, I appreciated that. Did it that. turn you on a bit? No, he did not turn me on. Well, there's not a lot of sound Wait, until I scream. Watch. Has he flicked it in yet? Oh, no. I beg your pardon. <laughs> it does look very nice. Watch. That settee looks nice. I was so taken aback. It's the listen, sorry, Gina, just listen. Listen to the bang. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mr. Mouse. Uh, anyway. Anyway. He was, he was very brave rescuing it. Because, I mean, he doesn't love mice either, but he, he's better with them than I am. Ooh. Uh, right, come on, let's do your etymetology of the week. Okay, well, this week, I'm going... Bit, actually, I should have done this last week when you were wearing that lovely um, black top. Um... Why do we wear black at funerals? Jolly, jolly, jolly. Here's the jingle. It's William, William, the etiquette geek. His knowledge, knowledge, is quite unique. He'll give you manners, manners, a subtle tweak. It's time for William's etiquette, etiquette, etymology of the week. And I'll tell you why we wear black at funerals after these messages. Okay, Gene Davis, thanks very much for sticking with us. It's now time to. Reveal William's etymology of the week. Why do we wear black at funerals, William? Well, I'm going to throw it at you first. Why do we wear black at funerals, George? Because it's dark and respectful and you're in mourning. Yes, I mean, that is the top line. But historically, I mean, black's a funny old colour, isn't it? Because it's now it's the sign of funerals and death and respect, but also it's the sign of being super chic, the little black dress mm. at a cocktail party for ladies, for example. But black clothing has a long history. The Romans changed to darker colours, not necessarily black, as a sign of respect. So the origins do start there, as with most things. But going way back, black cloth was incredibly expensive because to get the cloth a pure, consistent black, to dye it that colour, was incredibly complicated and so the, and because the dyeing process was not that sophisticated. So if you were wearing black, you were only able to do that because you had been able to buy well-made clothes. So in effect, your most expensive clothes were a way of showing your respect to the dead ah. in effect because you were wearing the most expensive like item in your wardrobe best. yes because it was so you know expensive to produce and then when prince albert died in uh, 1861 queen victoria the widow famously took to wearing black as we know and this happened at a time that coincidentally dyeing techniques improved because of the industrial revolution oh, yeah. so black was beca- became more affordable uh, and popular and that's sort of when the 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 commonplace thing of everybody from any walk of life, from any strata of society, happened was in the Victorian time. So it's both Romans and Victorians. Should you, should you still wear a black tie at funeral? Yes, unless they have spe- the, the deceased has specified in their thing that they wanted like a colour funeral. Is it okay to wear like a navy suit at a funeral? Navy suit is absolutely fine if it's dark navy, but and black, black tie. tie. Yep. Is it? Yes. Or dark grey, black you can wear. Okay. But yeah, I wear dark navy suits at funerals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I put it. But dark, it basically looks black, but it's dark navy. Okay. So there we go. We've all learned something. Shall we go to the uh, listeners' questions? Uh, well, before we do that, unless you've been living under, under a rock, you will already know that the Help I Sexed My Boss book is coming out towards the end of the year. It'll also have some of the best dilemmas we've come across about a wide range of topics. We've only got a few, and I do mean a few, signed copies left, so they won't be there for long. Head to sextonmyboss.com forward slash book. If you would like to pre-order your copy. Shall we go on to the listeners' questions? Yes. This is from Anonymous. Hi, William Jordan, EPB and Diego. I've been with my partner for just shy of five years. We've had a rocky relationship due to ex-partners and both of us having children with those ex-partners. But over the past few months, our relationship has blossomed with a few minor bumps in the road. However, a few nights ago, my partner was asleep. I was awake due to his fidgeting. Often he mutters in his sleep... On this night, it was quite obvious that he was having a happy dream and out of his mouth, he mutters his ex-wife's name. I kept my mouth shut for most of the week, but my anxiety got the better of me and I confronted him about it. Apparently, I'm childish. His ex is extremely pretty and I know my partner was besotted with her. What should I do? Many thanks. Anonymous. Oh, it's a difficult one. That's a hard one. 
I would say that your part, you know, your subconscious is a powerful thing. Um, however, it is somebody's subconscious. They are not consciously necessarily thinking about the person. I have all sorts of funny old dreams. Mm, me too. I had one the other night involving the entirety of BTS. <laughs> what? Did you actually? I'm very busy. God, did you? Mm. So there you go. I really wouldn't try to worry about it or none. Exactly. I don't think you can hold that up. If he was obviously, you know, in a chair, awake, having a nice time, going, oh, Debbie, oh, or whatever the ex-wife was called, then fair enough. But mm. it, he was asleep. Yeah, I agree. Yes. yes. Just try and let it go. And it, it sounds, I wouldn't have mentioned anything to my yeah. partner. And she might be pretty and what have you, but he's with you. Now. I'm sure you're good. And he, exactly. Yeah, and he loves you. Yeah. Precisely. This is from Lucy. Hello, William and Jordan. I have been with my other half for almost seven years. At the very start of the relationship, it was brought to my attention that my partner wants his firstborn son to have his first name as it is a family tradition. Okay. Whilst this is lovely and there is a long list of Johns running in the family tree, I just do not want to continue this tradition and want to be able to differentiate my child from all the other Johns in the family. What are your thoughts on this? I would really love to have children with my boyfriend one day, but this whole name saga is getting to me. Many thanks from Lucy. Oh, it's a tough... Mate, could you, could you compromise a middle name, John? Or could yeah. it be like a double barrel name? Do you remember that song from Recess? No. He was John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. He had my name too. And whenever we go out, the people always shout, there goes John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. <laughs> wow. How does my mind work? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was, he had my name too. And whenever we go out, the people always shout, there goes John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, maybe you could got John Paul, maybe he could be. No, I think John, yeah, it's especially, no. Nah, but it's communication. Your your thoughts are just as valid as his thoughts. There is no golden answer here. You just have to talk about it. If you do not feel able to talk to him about it and have a grown-up discussion where, yes, some people might get offended, but you need to have that conversation and you need to try to find a compromise. I agree. Um, then, but hey, you might end up having all girls and then it sorts itself yeah, out. Yeah, Lucy, if... if uh, you need to speak to your husband about it and maybe husband's family. And I'm not being funny, and no offence to any Johns, but... You wouldn't look at a baby now and go, John, would you? Johnny, maybe, but baby Johnny. Mm. However, I think the name Jack, George, Harry, they're all pretty timeless, but John. Yeah. Mm. I also... Middle name. Can I say this without offending people? <laughs> Who do they think they are? Who? Like, there's some great dynasty, like the Kennedys. Oh, wow. we're all called John. We're part oh, just get over yourself. That's a good point. It could be called John, but his nickname could be Jack, because John's short for Jack, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, Jack Kennedy. His real name's was John Kennedy. Oh, yeah, true. Right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So it could be... It could be yes, it that's nice. It could be John, nice. but you could call him Jack. I like that. There we go. Jack's a lovely name. My rant about the Kennedys has provided an entire answer. Christen him John, but call him Jack. A friend said this to me recently. Yes. Right? My friend said this to me. Oh, I Jordan's think she got might, the she a good point. All Jacks are good looking. Think of any... Usually, all Jacks are pretty handsome. Yeah. Jump cut Jack that makes this. Mm. Good looking guy. Mm -hmm. I don't think now. Any Jacks you know? She said it's a fit name. Oh, is it? Think of it. All the Jacks you know, I bet they're all pretty good looking. I think I only know one Jack. No, you know loads. Properly. No, I don't know loads. Don't tell me I know loads. I only know one Jack, and it's all Jump right. Cut. Anyway. Okay, well, there we go. If you're called Jack, congratulations. This is from Alex. Hi, William Jordan and EPB. A few weeks ago, I was at a farmer's market, no apostrophe, buying some fresh veggies. He means vegetables. The man selling the produce is a middle-aged, fit silver fox and extremely charming. Probably called Jack. <laughs> While he was upselling some of his carrots, he broke one off to hand it to me, and I, without thinking, just took it from his hand with my mouth while gazing deeply into his gorgeous blue eyes. <laughs> as soon as that happened, I realised what I had done, and 
The look of horror and confusion on his face was confirmation. <laughs> she bit a carrot. What are you, Rudolph? Bloody the trouble hell. is, the man lives in my village and we have mutual friends. I'm not sure what to do. I dread seeing him in the village and I worry that he might tell the other villagers, the other villagers, about how much of a weirdo I was. Should I beat him to the punch the next time I see him and make fun of it myself? Yeah. Or should I just pretend that nothing happened and I was not imagining his private member when I bit it out of his hand? From Alex. Alex. Boy or girl, Alex? I don't know. Alex, first of all, you are a weirdo, but you're more than welcome here because it's a safe space. It's home of weirdos. But I agree, you've got to... What was the term they used? Beaten to the punch. You've got to own it. Tell all your mates before he does. Yeah. And then... Got when, any plums? Yeah, yeah. And then next time you see him in the pub with your mates, just make a joke out of it. Yes. Just own it. Own it, own it, own it. What weirdo? Someone yes. cracks a carrot off and you bite it. <laughs> I mean, that is odd. Whoever is giving you the carrot. Yeah. Keep a carrot in their pocket and the next time they see it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. Just give them a carrot every time you see them. Two snowmen in a field. Can you smell carrots? <laughs> Can you smell carrots? <laughs> Don't ruin my joke. Sorry. <laughs> that's bad etiquette. Never finish someone else's joke. I'm sorry. This is from Anonymous. Dear William Jordan and the notorious EPP. I am a Leeds lad living in London, uh, as I'm a West End performer. Another Wendy. I recently ended up in a sticky situation and I need your opinion. I have lived in a shared house and recently, when a room became available, I thought it would be a great idea to invite my friend to rent it as she was looking for somewhere. I have never been more wrong. She is unbearable mm. to live with, mm. constantly complaining about the house and constantly cleaning stuff. I'm a very clean person myself, but this is on a ridiculous level. On top of this, she has started replacing all our possessions with her own and ours just disappear into the bin without a second thought. She also regularly uses the spare room. Me and my girl... Me and my girlfriend... I'm so sorry. Me and my girlfriend Are you pay shocked that, for... Uh, are you yeah. shocked that somebody that said... Come on, mm. tell us what you're thinking. Uh, no, um, it's not Wendy. Me and my girlfriend pay for to put up her mum and her friends. I'm talking at least two or three nights per week. She never asks and never offers to pay. I understand that people have different furniture tastes, etc., but this is not a way to live in a shared house, and I'm sure you'll agree. So I need your opinion on how to get rid of her. I don't want to lose a friendship, but I also want to be able to shower without bleach fume headaches. I've also thought about using some other G&Divas ideas, such as shitting in her butter or pretending to be a gay ghost to scare her off. But I'd love some other ideas. Please help before it gets to the brown butter level. And thanks for all the laughs over the years. Kind regards, Anonymous. Anonymous, um, everything you've told us in that letter, you need to say to her. I don't want to ruin the friendship, but... Yeah, and also, please, it is tough living with friends. Run towards the awkwardness. I know many people that live in with friends, and I'd say nine times out of ten, it's never quite worked out. Mm. And you won't be the first or last and say that to her. I really want us to be friends, but we're actually struggling living with you. I know that's hard. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say we're struggling living with you. I'd just say, look, this is going to be really awkward, but um, we have to have this conversation. And then list all the things that you've said to us, as, as Jordan says. But also, do you own this house? Do you, it's a shared house, but is it, I don't know. I, I just think you have to have the conversation. It's awkward, but also it's probably got to the point where you feel that the friendship is is affected. So, mm. And if she really was your friend, she probably wouldn't have treated you like that in the first place. So don't worry about it too much. Just be nice, do it with compassion, ask for a conversation and list out your gripes. Good good advice. Thank you. What's coming up on the weekend release, Jordan? We're doing a photo shoot next week and we're going to give you some behind the scenes access. We're going to record some extra bits whilst we're there, which should be fun. That'll be lovely. Yeah. So make yeah. sure you listen on Friday whilst we get our pictures taken. Yes. Helmets on. As always, remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday, watch us on YouTube on Sundays, and share us on social medias all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com. You can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexofmyboss. Your letters, your emails make the whole podcast, so please do get in touch. And if you've ever got in touch, we really do appreciate it. Thank you. Or you can write to William, who promises a hammer to reply in his own letter paper. <laughs> The address is on the website, sextedmyboss.com. What? This has just gone on a bit, this bit. <laughs> we will see you on Friday. Bye. Bye.